plum a day. Well, if I'm having a plum a day and if they're about 38 grams along with my other foods, those days I probably was 60 or 80, maybe even 100 grams of uh, carbs on those days that I was having a plum a day. And I was no worse for the wear. I felt great. Because in my opinion, it is an educated opinion, but in my opinion, our bodies are actually designed to flex a little bit. And I believe that when the Lord created the seasons, that he also created seasons for our bodies. And our bodies are designed to um, overeat a little bit on the temporary. They can handle it. And our bodies are also designed to go without or fast or have seasons where food is scarce. And I think that in our modern culture, we don't know how to go without anymore. And we have foods that are out of season available to us all the time. We don't have to worry about the seasonal kind of, I'm gonna eat my fruits because I'm not gonna have the availability um, in the winter for some, for some of these fruits or the magnitude of summer fruits in the winter. We are kind of all in all the time now. It's just kind of Vegas buffet all the time for a lot of us. And it has really screwed us up, not only in our metabolism, but I think also in our hormones. And, and, and that includes like our adrenal, our amount of stress is really, really high in our modern age where we have so much automation that you would think that uh, life would be a little easier and it just isn't. So let's talk about stress just for a second. Stress is a big factor when it comes to your uh, thyroid, uh, your um, sleep, your metabolism. So my clients, not only are they lowering their carbohydrates and increasing their healthy fats and um, usually for most women, I have to increase their protein um, just a little bit. Usually not so much with men. It seems like men typically naturally kind of get in uh, more protein. Um, but I need to encourage my women to um, have a little bit more peace and time of reflection, whether it's yoga or meditation, taking unplugged, tech-free walks, um, just breathing exercises. That's really, really big lifestyle change. Really big lifestyle change. A little tiny thing that you can do for thyroid health, which is a lifestyle change, is to add some selenium to your diet. I prefer the natural method of just having about three Brazil nuts every day. For those of you that like sardines, having a sardine. And, you know, it's just kind of a, a little boost for our thyroid that um, um, might help it balance out a little bit but definitely lowering those carbohydrates and doing it slowly. If you're really out of whack and that diet that I described earlier with the oatmeal and the honey and snacking on the fruit and maybe too much protein, then you're going to want to take this in small chunks. Another thing I want to mention is dairy for a lifestyle change. If you are suffering with any hormone issues or autoimmune issues, thyroid issues, I would steer clear of dairy, all right? It's a little bit of a disruptor, so it's kind of easiest just to take it right out. Okay, so how slow is slow for my students typically going into a lower carbohydrate diet? And I would just prefer to just call it like a lower carb diet instead of just keto, because not all of my clients are ketogenic, but, I, but I'll tell you this, we cut out a lot of the junk um, carbs that they were eating, which if you walk through the grocery store, it's pretty much mostly carbs. <laughs> you just need to go around the outside aisles with the fruits and the vegetables and the, and the meat, really everything in the middle is pretty much almost always carbohydrates. Seems like every commercial, every ad I see is just carbohydrate filled, right? But I'd say for the most part, it takes about a good three weeks to step my clients into a nice, lower carbohydrate diet. Now, if we know they're diabetic, if we know that they have autoimmune issues, if we know that they're already dealing with thyroid issues, then I usually don't hesitate to put them in a key, official ketogenic 
uh, frame of, um, of, of uh, carbohydrates and, and proteins temporarily. Um, maybe not every day, but definitely um, getting them down there and having them work some things out in their body. So, you know, I had somebody ask me recently, what is gluconeogenesis? Okay, so <laughs> I couldn't believe that I actually got that question. I was like, wow, are you listening to podcasts or what? Gluconeogenesis is when our liver creates the sugar that we need or glycogen and they get it from protein. So in all honesty, what science tells us today is that we cannot live as humans without fat or protein. We can literally live off of zero dietary carbohydrates. We can. Now I think they're delicious. So I'm not going to give up. I mean, even your vegetables, so a lot of your vegetables have a small amount of carbohydrates in them. You literally can live without them. But you cannot live without some, or, or you can live without the carbohydrates. And the reason why you can live without zero dietary carbohydrates is because of gluconeogenesis. Our liver, when um, our bodies need sugar, it can make it. Our liver does like 300 or 400 different fun functions. I can never remember. But it's pretty awesome. So why do I bring this up? Well... They were eating way too much protein. They were eating 200 to 250 grams of protein a day. And I was like, holy smokes, who are you, Michael Phelps? <laughs> there was absolutely no reason for that. So it was a great question and we handled it. Uh, most women, usually 60 to 80 grams of protein per day. I'm only five feet tall, 120. I seem to do better on 60. Some, if it's a lifting day, I might do a little bit more. But uh, that's kind of my happy place. And I recommend with all the dietary changes and lifestyle changes that you make that you journal your, your steps that you're taking and then you evaluate them. How did I feel? How did I sleep? What's my libido like? My attitude, my anxiety, uh, my energy, my bowel movements. All of that matters. Did I have headaches today? Do I deal with pain? Was it greater or lesser? Right. Okay. So what else did I want to talk about? Oh, I wanted to talk about, uh, uh, lectins, nightshades, especially the, my favorite, like the potatoes, the peppers, the tomatoes, the eggplants. I do have a handful of, uh, clients that are, um, well, they cut down on their lectins, which you also find a lot in the whole grains. Most of my clients are grain-free because most of my clients are dealing with autoimmune issues. I think the statistics are crazy right now, like one in three people are walking around, whether they know it or not, with chronic um, autoimmune issues. So uh, we, do, we do stay away from nightshades, typically, and um, for, the, for the lectin reasons, and we stay away from grains. But I tell you what, ketones. Ketones are awesome. Ketones are great for your brain. They're great for cancer because cancer likes sugar. <laughs> so um, oftentimes people that have cancer are put on a ketogenic diet so they are not eating um, the fuel to make their cancer grow. And um, ketones are also great for Alzheimer's and um, other forms of dementia. And remember, um, Ketogenic diets are very low um, anti-inflammatory diets, and um, that's pretty much why um, Alzheimer's is referred to as uh, the type three diabetes, is the uh, level of um, the inflammation and the, the sugar issues. Okay, what else did I want to talk about here? I'm looking at my notes. I've been doing a good job making notes so that I don't get um, um, off track too much. Oh, you know, this is one thing I wanted to reiterate is when you go to the doctor, I mean, hopefully you have a functional medical doctor or you have a conventional medical doctor that is um, willing to run more comprehensive tests. I wanted to say this one more time. Typically, all they do is a TSH and it's not comprehensive enough. And so you want to make sure that you ask for free T3 and free T4 and also your reverse T3 as well as two Hashimoto antibodies tests, TPOAB and TGAB, and you won't, you won't regret it. Um, 
So I think that's about it. I do know that I, I really want to encourage you to uh, find a practitioner, a functional med medical practitioner, or somebody that is willing to kind of go through this with you. Um, if you are struggling, I just want to encourage you to not give up. I know that it can be a lonely business, and I know that you could really feel like the sky is falling and you know, you're Haney Penny, if you remember that children's story, running around and just people aren't believing you. Um, it does get lonely, it gets frustrating, and, um, and try not to use it as an excuse to step out of life, your symptoms. Um, I'm, I'm dealing with stuff too, with fibromyalgia, and I know how easy it is to kind of uh, pull back, especially when you're experiencing brain fog, brain fog fatigue, um, anxiety or depression. I tend to run a low-grade fever, you know, usually around 199.4 uh, to um, 100. And, you know, we all know what it feels like when you walk around with a low-grade fever. And so um, just try and stay positive and have times of uh, gratitude, maybe gratitude journaling, times of uh, thankfulness, and really counting your blessings. Because if you start counting your blessings and you start just listing them out, you are blessed. You are blessed, especially if you're one of my listeners that are here in the United States. I tell you what, we're blessed here. Um, most of us have a roof over our head and a thousand dollar phone in our hand. And most of us have problems with overindulgence, not starvation. <laughs> this this uh, diabetes situation, this is brought on by ourselves. It really, really is. Now, a whole other conversation is how our food is, has been genetically modified and how it is affecting even our own genes and our own mental state. And some even say, hey, it's not your fault, but you really do have a choice here. And I hope you choose to make some changes. Um, I have a couple openings uh, for uh, nutrition clients. I would be happy to work with you. I'm not going to lie. It is easier to have the accountability. That's why my clients come to me is because they know they're going to see me once. Uh, some of them see me three times a week and we can stay really on top of the nutrition. And it's just nice to feel like you have somebody in your corner. Um, I you know, um, having the extra weight around the middle and the, and the muffin top, not being able to sleep. Um, it's not going to be fixed by you just saying, I'm not going to get caught up with the vanity, um, that our modern culture, uh, promotes. I'm not talking about vanity. I'm just talking about good health. I'm just talking about having energy and a clear mind and living a long life and having a lot of foods at your discretion. One of my own uh, goals for myself in uh, fixing a lot of gut issues that my autoimmune um, uh, malfunction has created is to get to a point where, you know what, if I want to eat a gross grocery store cupcake, I can. I don't necessarily want to even now, but I don't want it to be a food allergy issue. Right, The only price I want to pay for it would be like that disgusting feeling in my stomach and probably some lethargy because my body's just not used to processing that crap anymore. <laughs> I don't want to have all of the other issues uh, which comes with a food allergy. So I hope that this um, answers some questions about thyroid um, uh, for you. I hope that you're avoiding the, the lectins, the glutens, and the grains if you have Hashimoto's. And I hope that if you are suffering um, from fatigue or you can't lose weight and you're doing all the right things, I hope you go in and you ask for those tests from your medical professional. So it was really fun talking to you today. Um, I look forward to doing each of these and um, and I'm, I'm hoping that I'm getting better at it. It, it, is pretty, it is pretty fun. It's different not talking to like a person <laughs> and talking to a microphone. So uh, please comment, please share with other women. That's why I'm doing this is um, for more women to be empowered and to learn less uh, from uh, rumor and myth and learn more from um, educated professionals like myself. And speaking of, 
on Monday, I'm back to school again, finishing uh, what is the...